Seven steps to the highest kind of faith. Hallelujah. And in order for one to develop a successful faith walk, one must gain insight into certain aspects of the walk with God. Although God is merciful to us where we are, where we, are we should be endeavoring to grow from faith to faith and from glory to glory. We should strive for the highest kind of faith. No, no. Don't be in condemnation if you're not at the highest kind of faith or if you're not at, the, you know, in full maturity. or this. You strive for it. God's merciful and, God, and His grace is extended to you while you're growing. We want, but we want to keep growing. Okay? Keep in mind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Now let's look here. Uh, the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. So when, the first thing we have to settle once and for all. Everybody say once and for all is the integrity of God's Word. There's an attack on the Word of God. There is an attack on the uh, authority of the Word of God, the necessity of the Word of God going on right now in the church. Now, forget the world. They've been attacking the Word of God for, for millennia. But today in the church, there's an attack on the, on the Word of God. You know, of its authority and, and uh, its, its authenticity and so forth. And um, we have to understand that the, God's Word is God's Word. God's Word is exactly what it declares itself to be. God's Word. <laughs> Psalm 119. Hallelujah. All right. we're, we're a little, we're not, I don't want to say sad, but the girls are leaving as soon as church. They're not coming, they're not coming back to the house. Hallelujah. They're leaving after the service. But it's been nice to have them at home. Look at Psalm 119, verse 89. It says, Forever, O Lord... Thy word is settled in heaven. Whose word? His word. Thy word is settled in heaven. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder of even the soul and the spirit, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can everybody say glory to God? Hallelujah. And... Uh, I did read that right. I did quote that right. All right. <laughs> it's good when you quote it right, isn't it? <clears throat> it's, it's quick. Now, word quick in old King, Jim, uh, King James, or as I like to refer to it as the King Jimmy, hallelujah, is, is an old English word. Now, in English, it, it, it meant this, but in that era, but in our area, quick just means you're a fast runner. Okay? Uh, you, can, you do something quick, you t you're really fast at it. But it, in this era, uh, the word meant alive, a living thing. It is alive. doesn't mean that it's fast. It means it's alive. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you'll find out there's a lot of things you do from the Word of God that with patience you have to possess your souls. It's not fast at all. You've got you to walk it out by faith and let, let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Word of God is a living thing and powerful and sharper than any two edges or peace piercing even to the dividing asunder. A soul and spirit, a suke and numa. We know they're not the same thing because they can be divided and separated. Now the joints and the marrow is a discerner. See, the Word of God will discern your pure, uh, the thoughts and intents of the heart. It'll, yeah, it'll just cut right through all the bull. All the stuff, you, all the dressing you put on it to make it sound better than it really is. Yeah. Amen. The Word of God will just cut that mess away. Hallelujah. Oh, people get so spiritual. Oh, yes, the Lord showed me that I don't have to do this because he knows, the, he knows my heart. Well, if what is in your heart it doesn't line up with the Word, then, then the, the, the Word of God will, that's why the people don't want to hear what you got to say from the Word, because it cuts that junk off where the Lord showed me. The Lord don't show you things that are contrary to His Word. Just because He knows your heart. Well, He knows I meant right. Well, that's great. You meant right. Or, you, or, or, or and a lot of times people say that kind of thing simply meaning that they think that what they're thinking is right. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says or what the Word says. They know they're right. Well, that's just garbage. That's, that's, that's rubbish. Are you here? The Word of God cuts through all that stuff and gets down to the heart of the, heart of the matter, no pun intended, of you know, what the Word says is right. What the Word says is right. What the Word says is right. And what the Word says is right. All right? Everybody got that? Amen. And so who's right? The Word of God is right. All right? All right. Okay. There are no lefts there. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the Word of God will, will go through all this, this psychological or, 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 or soulish stuff that gives you a reason to do something different than what the Word says. The Word of God just goes... 
it discerns what's really the faults and the intents of the heart and says, no, this is what the Word says. This is how you got to do it. Okay? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Look over there. God's Word is of the highest integrity. You can't get any, any better than God's Word. 2 Peter chapter 1, looking verse 19. Let's we'll back up verse 18. Let's back all the way up to verse 16. I'm going to start in verse 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that you be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables will be made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, and there came such a voice as to him from the excellent glory, that is from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, which when we were with him in the holy mountain. Now stop right there. Just stop right there. Don't read on. Don't look. Stop cheating. Okay. Peter says they heard the audible voice of God Almighty from heaven. They were there in the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was transfigured into his glory in front of them. His raiment became sparkling and shining and bright white because of the glory of God. They were sitting right there. And when it happened, Peter, James, and John decided they wanted to build a tap three tents for him. One for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for um, um, uh, Jesus. And they just camp out up there. Remember that? We're going we're to build three tents and camp. Well, it wasn't going to be three tents. They had to go three crosses. They had to be three crosses first before you, before you could take camp in the glory. Amen? In the Old Testament, they could camp near the glory. In the New Testament, we are, we are the tent of the glory. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, thank God. Amen. <clears throat> but Peter says, he says, that we're not giving you devised, calling devised fables. We were there. We were there when he was transfigured. We were there when we heard the voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We were right there on that mountain when that took place. Glory to God. Man, Peter could stop. Man, I tell you what, it's nothing like the audible voice of God. There's nothing like hearing the, the voice from heaven. He could have preached that. There's nothing like getting special voices from heaven telling you exactly what to do. That's not where Peter stopped, and that's not where he went. Next verse. We have also a more, a more sure word of prophecy. Stop. What? Can, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's a, there's a teaching out there. We don't need the written word. You know, it's, it's okay, but it's not that important. The voice of God on the inside of you is the most important thing. Now, I know there's extenuating circumstances where you may be somewhere and you got saved. You don't have a Bible. The Holy Ghost can teach you. But I'm telling you, you know, uh, we need the written word. It's, it's paramount. Peter said, I just heard, told you, I saw this transfiguration. We heard the voice, but we have a more sure word of prophecy than what? Than the audible voice of God. Now, that's a heavy statement. And what did he say? Whereunto you do well that ye take heed. As unto a light that shineth in dark place unto the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Think about that now. He says we got a more sure word of prophecy and it would do you well to take heed to this more sure word. That's strong. What does he say? Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spoke and it was written down. It became Scripture. Peter says that the written word is a more sure word than the audible voice. Why? Because people can hear what they want to hear. And they do it all the time. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, the, the, the Hagans have been, um, let's, let's pick up, go a little bit into chapter 2, because really, um, if you think about this, chapter 1 ends at verse 21, but chapter 2 is not a, a um, different thought. It goes, but. Now, but has to be in, in, in contrast to something. 
You just don't start out a chapter or, or a letter or a thought going, but, you know, the but would be in reference to something that had preceded it, wouldn't it? Or else the but wouldn't be needed. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily come in and damnable, uh, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom uh, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall with feigned words, that means insincere, uh, make merchandise of you whose judgment now of long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. And then it goes on and talks about the, the, listen, that's why the written word is so important. That's why there's a sure word of prophecy to guard us against those who are going to enter in with false prophecies and bring in heresies even to the point they deny the Lord, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and they, people follow them. And listen to verse 3, I love this because this really tells you what it's all about. And through covetousness, they're after one thing. Money, 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 money. Bring back a little OJ's here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Money, 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 money. <laughs> money. <laughs> That's all Dick lifted. Yeah, I remember that song. <laughs> How many remember the OJ's? Yeah. Soul Train, get on the board. Hallelujah. All right. But listen. Through covetous, they'll bring in, the King James uses the word feign. Uh, that means insincere. You, you know, there's a lot of places you see that it's, it's faith unfeigned. That means that it's sincere. I don't, you know, um, but insincere words make merchandise of you. People do that all the time. They're raping and pillaging the church for their own personal gain. And they'll preach stuff and tell stuff and say stuff. And they'll do it for the sole purpose that this gets a big crowd, it gets a lot of money. They don't care. Or they want to follow me. They'll tell people stuff and get a following. I, you know, and I was going to say this. We, past couple of weeks, we've kind of hit on some stuff. And uh, one of the reasons is because when I was at Raymond teaching the third year pastors group, I got to teach some stuff and some stuff came out by the Spirit that I hadn't really put together before. It happens. You get the teaching. So you get over into the anointing and get teaching in the anointing, you'll teach yourself. I mean, because it's not really you teaching anyway. It's the, it's the anointing that's teaching. It's the Holy Ghost that's teaching. And, you know, you just, be, you know, and sometimes I just become the listener too. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm just the vessel, but my, but my spirit is getting revelation out of it at the same time. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting understanding it at the same time as being preached by the anointing because it's the anointing that's doing the teaching. Hallelujah. And got talking about the seeds of, of um, that, that people can sow in people under the guise of it being God. And then people take that and pray it out and pray themselves right out of the will of God. Israel, in, in one sense of the word, prayed themselves out of the will of God wanting a king. God didn't want them to have a king, but they kept one. Oh, we want a king. And the prophet said, you, God's, God's your king. No, we want us a king like everybody else. And God said, okay. And so that is our typology of praying yourself into a place that God will let you go that wasn't his will. And you can do it. Now, we get real spiritual. Well, I prayed and the Lord, the, and, and I prayed and I got a release. No, the Lord just said, okay. That wasn't a release. It's whatever you want to do, he'll let you do it. So that's why we have to, that is why we, we have to, I'm going to try to tie this back into seven, because faith, faith works where the will of God's known. Faith begins where the will of God's known. If you don't know the will of God, you can't stand in faith. Amen? There's a lot of people who think they're standing in faith, but they're not in the will of God because they prayed themselves into a place that wasn't God's will. And God kept dealing with them. Let me say this here. Let me just say something. If God tells you to do something, there ain't no need in praying about it. Do, do y'all hear me? If God said you're going to Africa as a missionary, the only thing you need to pray about is when. Now, Lord, okay, I'm willing to go. I'll make arrangements to go. You tell me when to go. You don't go. Now, Lord, do you really want me to go to Africa? He's already told you he wanted you to go. Does that make sense? If he's already told you something, there's no need to be praying about whether or not to do it. That's, that's, because what you're doing is, is you're trying to change it. Because you wouldn't be trying to change it if you wanted to do what he told you to do. And you're going, and then you come back to him and go, do you really want me to do that? You're, you're trying to like fleece God. 
No, that's, a, that's the Old Testament concept. We don't do that in the New. We're led by the Spirit of God. And when God tells you to do something, I'm going to tell you, there's not going to be any faith to do that which is outside the will of God. Hello? And so, you'll get people, God will be dealing with about doing something. I've, I've seen God deal with people about, um, <clears throat> about their ministry, about their calling, about what they're supposed to do, and they don't like it. And so, they'll try to pray, they'll, they'll pray themselves out of it. Because basically what they do is God says, okay, do what you want to do. I told you what I wanted. This is what I said. Are y'all here, y'all going home? This is senseless. And I'm not trying to be harsh, but I'm trying to be strong. And so I kind of begin to see some of these things, and then Sister Lynette dealt with that yesterday and today, both days. I mean, and then, I mean, and even Pastor said a couple things last, uh, night before last. I'm telling you, I'm t it's just, there's a theme here that the church has got to get back to being led by the Spirit. And, when, and, and, and honestly, and honestly, if God has dealt with you about something, don't try to pray about whether or not you should do it. Like if, Nathan, if I tell Nathan, I want you to cut the grass tomorrow. And he comes in six times before he goes to bed that night. Dad, do you really want me to cut the grass tomorrow? Dad, do you really? Why, why is he doing that? Because he don't want to cut the grass tomorrow. He's hoping I'll change my mind. And, he, and listen, listen, you know this is just what I'll do. And by beating me down and constantly harassing me, trying to get me to say, oh, just forget it, I'll do it. Okay. And what's he got? He's got the okay not to do it because I, I finally just quit, gave up. Now, you don't beat God down, but finally God says, whatever you want to do, I'm, I'm not going to keep dealing with you about this. <clears throat> I told you what to do. Can I get at least a, three holy grunts out there? Amen. And, and, I, and I've watched people do this in, in different areas and different things. And, and um, you know, and let me tell you something. Just because somebody says, yeah, thus saith the Lord, don't mean it's God. Yeah, right. Are you here? Um, we had a situation a number of years ago. Someone was, uh, was wanting to go somewhere and start a church. And um, they were going over to some meetings with, a, with another organization. And, and the, one, the, the local area head of that meeting was prophesying over them. Yo, it's going to be glorious. You're going to do this for the kingdom. You're going to be doing that. And the whole time I knew it wasn't the will of God. But because they were prophesying it. And they took a hold of it and began to pray out that. They got themselves all the way out, off staff, out of a job. Building, getting ready to do that, and about two months later, they came in one day and, and, and uh, said, "I got to talk to you." I shared the scripture about uh, Israel wanting a king, and uh, the uh, husband wrestled with that all night long. Woke up the next day and said, he "Came to me and said, I, I, I don't want a king. I don't want a king.' You know, but they, see, people begin to prophesy stuff. Well, what are, they, what are they picking up on? I'm gonna tell you something. You can pick up stuff by your human spirit that's not God, yeah. and call it, and then and give it back out and say it's the Lord. Yeah. That's why we've got to be careful. Spiritual things are not a toy. God didn't call you to run around and try to give everybody a word and be, be, be Mr. Miser encouragement. Everybody wants you around because you're a dollar prophet. Hello? I mean, if you're going to get, if you've, if you've got something from heaven, it's better be from heaven. And it better not be stuff you're just making up or, or coming up with. You, you test, I, I'll test, I'll say, Lord, is that the Lord? I, I do, I'll talk to the Lord about stuff. Now I'm older in the Lord. I'm more trained and developed in the things of the Spirit and been around those things. I'm more cute. But I'll tell you what. You can, you can mess somebody up thinking you're being cool. Oh, yeah, God used me to prophesy with somebody. Well, if your prophecy is a wrong seed in their heart and they begin to lay hold of that and begin to pray that thing, I'm, I'm off of seven steps of highest kind of faith. But, you know, they begin to pray that thing out and move that direction. You could cause them, you could be part of helping them miss God. Yeah. And then everybody around, everybody around thinks, oh, that was God. They're, look at the, 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 they've moved on and done this and never knew they missed something that God had that was greater and was going to affect more. And, and listen, was going to affect people, but I'm going to tell you something. The change does, affects people also. The people that were missed or the people that did not come into the where they were supposed to be because people were not in the right place at that time. 
spiritual things are serious. I'm not, listen, God is merciful to people. He'll forgive them. He'll restore them. He'll put them back in, you know, he'll, he'll exalt, he'll, he'll use them wherever they, and I, t- you know, I told, I told, I actually told the person when they said that, I said, I said, you know, Israel won the king, they got a king, but, you know, and, and I said, and, and once God said you have a king, it became, it became his will in that sense that he allowed it, and he anointed the kings after that. Mm-hmm. There's never his will to have one. So I said, you know, I told the person, I said, look, you know what? If that's not right, you know, when you went, you really following, you thought you're following the right thing of God. God will bless you as best he can. You know, you, and, you know, and, and, and he, you're, you know, he loves you. You're, you're called of God. You're anointed. He'll, he'll use you. Praise God. I'm just trying to encourage them that even if, if at this point, if you'd miss God, he'll, he'll restore you. But they, they didn't go well overnight. They, he wrestled with that all night. And the, and, and, the, and the Lord was able to arrest that situation at, at, that, at that time. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, see, when we begin to pray things out, I think we've, <laughs> I'm going to go get every medal a little bit. I think we've, we've missed some things in prayer about understanding prayer. Because prayer is not about praying out what you want. Prayer is about consecrating and dedicating and submitting yourself to his will and then praying out what he wants. I'm talking about in, in, in doing the will of God. Now, there's so many things you need to, there, there are things, and I'm talking about in, involved in making moves and decisions in life and going in certain ways with God and, and being in certain places for God. And those kind, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, praying out and believing you receive your healing or believing you receive you know, your needs met, those kind of things. That's a, that's a, different, that's a different vein. I'm talking about in, 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 in following the will of God in, in life. Amen. I believe I, I, I'm I'm seeing uh, one of the shortcomings that we've had in the charismatic word of faith teaching revival circles groups whatever is that we we spent so much time teaching people they can have what they say and they can get what they want that people spend all the time praying about their desires their wants what they got to have how they want it to be where they want to be what what they desire in life and ne- and not spending enough time finding out the will of God about those things. Listen, it's, you don't have to pray about, does he want you healed? Right. That's the Bible. Does he want you to prosper? That's the Bible. Right. What you do need to pray about um, where you are. I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? Or consecrating yourself to the will of God about those things. Um, you know, I want, I want this. You know, I want, I want to live in that neighborhood. Well, yeah, but what about if that's the wrong neighborhood? Yeah. Have, you, have you talked to the Lord about it? Well, I can have whatever I want to have. Yeah, but, but you don't know. That there may be things in that neighborhood that you don't need to be involved around. <clears throat> you might have a neighbor who leads you astray from the things of God. And God knows that. And he's trying to lead you a whole different direction. But you can bless God. I'm going to have it no matter what. We've got to get back to, first of all, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We've got to get back to ascertaining the will of God first before we pursue things. Now, and, and, like, and I'm, I'm not going to rehearse Sister Lynette's sermons from yesterday and today, but um, from the meeting over here, but I'll tell you, once you ascertain what the will of God is, you need to ascertain how much do I need to pursue this in prayer at this point in time. Or is it something? Listen, when I first got saved, I mean, I'm telling you, when I first got saved, nobody prophesied it to me. Nobody said this is what it's going to be. Nobody laid hands on me and said, yeah, you shall travel here. It was in my heart from day one I would go to the Orient and preach. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It was so real at that time, I thought I was leaving next week. Yeah, 20 years later. As a matter of fact, it got to the point, I just put it on the back burner and said, well, Lord, you know, because all of a sudden I'm going, to, I'm going to Europe all the time. Now, he said, I'll go to Asia at some point, and I knew I would, but it kind of got on the back burner. But things had to be put in place. You know, Sister Lynette said that today. You know, certain people had to be positioned, certain things had to be in place. And when the church did certain things for Raymond to go where it went, Pastor talked about this, uh, people had to be in place. Money had to be in place. Personnel had to be in place. And then it went. They tried to do it earlier and it didn't go. They tried to do it 20 years earlier and it didn't go. Now they, they did it. Now we have 118 Raymond Bible Training Centers around the world right now. 
if they put them all together and we're all meeting at the exact same time. You understand time zones and in and, and the southern hemisphere, their winter is in our summer and so they meet different. Okay? They, 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 they meet opposite of us. And they overlap. But if they all ran Bible training centers were meeting on the exact same days, they got, we'd have over 10,000 students in class. And people ask me, well, wow, Rain was in trouble. I mean, they, I heard they're down to about 1,400 students. And yeah, in Tulsa, yeah. we used to we'd go, well, I remember that we had 2,000. We used to have 2,000. <coughs> We're down 600 here and up 8,000 around the world. I, th I'm, yeah. I, I think we're doing well. I think, I think that's, a, that's an increase. <laughs> what do you think, Brother Bill? Oh, so we're down 600 students. And, well, where are those 600 students coming from? Probably those students are students that were coming from these other countries. They don't need to come here now. Yeah. They can go to the schools there. Right. And we've got 10,000 students meeting now instead of 2,000. 10,000 students instead of two. That's a big difference. Yeah. I said that's a big difference. That's 10 times the amount. Amen? Yeah, right. Same thing is true of our audience. That's right. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of people listening on the internet. Tithe. Send, <laughs> if you're not in the church and you're not, there's not a church near you, tithe. Send offering. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help us keep doing what we're called to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, and so, you know, they tried to step out and do something years ago and it didn't work. I remember I tried to start my own ministry. I remember I'd, um, I, was, I was out of Raymond about a couple of years there. And I was going to start, I started up, I was going to start Ed Taylor Ministries. Hallelujah. Or Edward Taylor Ministries. Fireball of God, man, man of faith and power. <laughs> Went down to the Chocowinity Community Center. Chocowinity, North Carolina. Now, Chocowinity is where um, um, Laverne trips from. I've been in the building Laverne Tripp got saved in. The Piney Grove, the Pentecostal Holiness, Piney Grove, Kent meeting building. Cinder block painted light green with screen windows and yellow bug lights. Now, the first time I, the, I, I, I prophesied was in that building. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the, 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 uh, the conference superintendent just smiled. That young, excited young man down there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, but I went down to the Chocolate in North Carolina, had me a meeting. We made $100. You know, we, 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 after all the budgets met, $100 had come in. Man, praise God. We gotta, we're going to come back down next month. Same building. Lost $100. I took it as a sign. Quit. <laughs> Uh, at least the Lord let me break even. <laughs> oh, no, I, you know, it, just, it just wasn't working. You know, you just think, you know, I was trying to push something out there, trying to get into to a certain place in ministry uh, ahead of time. Yeah. But praise God, we're, we're, we're now we've traveled all over the world. Yeah. Amen. You know, some things you just have to let God work out and you wait out and let the Lord do it. Yeah, right. Amen. You know you're called, you know, you know but you can't, you can't go praying yourself into something. Listen, I mean, when um, I'm going to take the next about six, seven minutes and we receive the offer, we're going to go home. I was on staff. I, I was not on staff. I was, I would, when I graduated from Raymond, I went back to my hometown. Um, our Pentecostal Holiness Church, the uh, superintendent had just sent out a letter to the pastors. And we know this because one of the pastors told us that, um, he said, please don't let people preach Hagen or Copeland in your churches. They don't let them preach it. You know? And, um, so my pastor came to me and said, well, I want you to be involved. I want you to do this. He said, well, pastor, I said, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to move. We're going to go over to Faith and Victory Church. And he, he, was a little, he was a little upset, but, you know, because I mean, he saw I was, you know, I, you know but I got to go. I got to go where we can, you know, I, where I can function. And, and not only that, the year before I, I went, I left in the summer of 80, and we had a minister in our conference who had been with the PH Church for 34 years, missionary to Honduras, well, well respected minister in the denomination. Been pastoring over in a little town called Bethel, North Carolina. He, he, he resigned his pastorship, went to Raymond for a year, came back, they wouldn't let him have a church. Now he's, he's well respected in the denomination, known all over the denomination. Wouldn't let him have a, wouldn't let him have a church because he had gone to Raymond. 
Well, when I come back, you know, what, what's going to be different with me? I'm, I'm, I'm not even known in the denomination, much less well known. You know, been with him 34 years. We've done all kinds of stuff. And, um, and I talked to another minister who was with that denomination a few years later and said, he's still well respected, especially outside this conference. He's very well, he's highly respected outside this conference. But that conference wouldn't let him have a church because he'd gone to Ramah. Praise the Lord. He did it. He did it. And he spent the last year, I think he's still pastoring. I think his wife's gone home to the Lord. I think he's still pastoring. Done a wonderful work. The Lord, you know, he's a good man. Amen. Well, so I went over to a different church, went into a different church and was there working and, and, and been there for a number of years. My pastor always telling me, um, you know, you're like, a, you're like my assistant, you know, we don't have enough money to hire you. One of these days, when we get the money, we're going to hire you. Oh, praise the Lord, Pastor. That's, that's all right. We're, you know, I'm, I'm busy working. I'm preparing. I'm ready. You know, you just say go. Came to me on Friday after about three years. And I've been faithful. I mean, just faithful. He called me outside, and, you know, because I work at Parker's. So he came and said, can you talk? And I went out. And I said, hey, can I go? Yeah, okay. And I went out and talked to him. He said, how much do you make? How much notice do you need to give? I'm, I'm planning on hiring you on Monday. I'm going to pray about some more this weekend, but I'm going to hire you on Monday. Okay. Oh, praise God. Boy, I'm, you know, you're talking about a weekend of glory. Oh, yeah. Man, I am cock lock, ready to rock. I'm giving my notice Monday afternoon at the pig, at the pig slopping, chicken thro throwing, fried barbecue. I mean, all the, the, the grease and stuff is history. I am going in the ministry full time. Hallelujah. Amen. Go all weekend. Praise God. Just, I mean, can't even, can't even sleep Sunday night. Glory to God. Tomorrow is the day. He comes back to Parker's. I said, can I talk to you? Go outside. He said, look. He said, I was on the platform yesterday, and I heard a voice say, well, I haven't you considered so-and-so, so I hired him. That afternoon, right then, I heard a voice say, well, haven't you considered my servant so-and-so? So I hired him. And I said, it's been three years, and all the time I've been waiting for him to get enough money so I could come on staff. And in, in, in a fleeting second, it's all gone. I, talking about hard. Can you fathom how hard it was to go back to church? Oh my. Had, a, had an installation service for the, 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 the man. And I'm telling you, it was like, it was like Jesus had walked on water and come into the building. I mean, it was, it was pomp and circumstance. It was glorious. It was how wonderful. I mean, it was something else. Yeah. Cheering when they announced he was going to be the, the, the assistant pastor. Because he, he already had his own following in the church. Cheered. Yeah. I tried. Now, listen, I'm going to be honest. I tried to pray about leaving. Now, here's, here's where you got to be led by your spirit. When you're trying to pray something about, about something, you can't leave it alone. I tried. I'd go to, I'd go to the Lord. You know, and I, 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 couldn't even get the, I couldn't even get over there to bring it up to talk about it. He wouldn't let me. And my spirit was shutting it down. And so I just finally left it alone. And, and, and I just said, okay, Lord, I'll just, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll just stay here and do what I'm doing right now. Until Jesus comes back, if that's what you want me to do. It was hard. Oh, it was hard. He, the, the guy gained influence. I mean, he, he actually had the point. At one point, had he done it, he probably would have split the church in half. It's about the time, about the time he left, by the, then some, the Lord had been able to turn it and, and start disconnecting people from him to when he, he finally left to go somewhere else. It didn't hurt the church. But I'm telling there was a time he could have. He used to counsel people. I don't agree with Pastor so-and-so, but I can't do anything about it. They'd come to him with their complaints. So the pastor's preaching this, and I don't agree with him. He said, I don't either, but there's nothing I can do about it. That's not what assistant does. He's the pastor. He's the leader. You need to submit and, and hear from, you know, you need, you need to walk in submission. What do you think? It's not a matter what I think. He's the pastor. It doesn't matter what I think. It really doesn't. I mean, if it's grave doctrinal error, I'd have to leave if he, wouldn't, if he kept teaching something gravely doctrinally wrong. If he came up and said, you know, everybody's going to be, Satan and the angels are going to be saved, and if you don't believe that, you're in the wrong church, I'd have to leave. So, I, I mean, I, oh, I want to, and then, I, and then talk about fishing, I have people coming to me. 
I'm telling you, I don't know why he did what he did, but I'll tell you what, if you start a church, I'll go with you. Now, don't think the devil didn't sit on your shoulder and go, you got to follow me. You can go start you a church. Or you, can, you, do, you can go ahead and get and do what you're called to do. Had another, listen, I'm telling you, had another minister come to the church that preached at the church. Well-known evangelist. And I um, was, you know, I would take the guest ministers to him from the hotel and that kind of stuff, pick them up, take care of them in the ready room. And that, even though I wasn't on staff, I would do that. And they would say, how often do you preach? We'd take them home one night, me and Janie. How often do you preach? I said, oh, about six times a year. That's not enough. Look, we're starting a church in such and such city. We'd love to have you come help us. I said, I can't do that. I've got, I've got to obey God. I've got to do what God told me to do. Well, I'm telling you, we could, we could use you. You could be a blessing. So, you know, I appreciate it. But you know what? The Lord told me to be here. Somebody comes and say, if you, you, know, if you start church, I'll, I'll come. I said, if I start church, be so far away, you can't come. I'll never start one here that will hurt this church in any way, shape, or form. It'll be just too far for you to drive. You won't want to go because it's too far away. I'm not going to hurt the church. Hallelujah. Had another pastor town call me and say, look, I want you. He was a PH, but he's, he's, he's working in a non-denominational church. He's, he's running that church and calls me and says, I want you to come over next four Wednesday nights and preach for me. So I went to my pastor and said, you know, he wants me to preach for him next. Is that all right? Yeah, you go ahead. I didn't know he was trying me out for, I'm done. Listen, I'm gullible. Well, he used to be. I'm not as gullible as I used to be. I'm semi-gullible now. All right? Back then, I was, I, I was, I was a gullible bomb. Hallelujah. And uh, I didn't know he was trying me out for assistant pastor. The thing was, I didn't get, he didn't offer me a job because I couldn't sing lead worship. He told people, that's the only reason, that's the only reason he didn't offer me the job is because I couldn't sing and lead worship. Now you think, you know, Pastor, you sing okay now, you should have heard me back then. I mean, the dogs would howl 10 miles away. Praise the Lord. We had, we had great times in those meetings. I had supernatural event. I had a vision of a girl coming in one night. Out the side, they're, they're, you know, some of these churches where they had the, the, the education wing would empty in the sanctuary off the side door. And they never used the back doors. You know, they come in, you always use the, come into the education wing, come in the hallway and come in that door on the side into the sanctuary. Just never use the back doors. Never. I mean, not even for, maybe for wedding to go out the door. You know, but in the vision, I saw the girl walk in, come across the back, sit in the back corner, sit down. I stopped, turned to her and said, have you ever been filled with the Holy Ghost speaking to her? She said, no. I said, come up here, I lay hands on her. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, lo and behold, I'm preaching. There she comes, walking in the door. It's the same girl I saw in the vision. Praise the Lord. Walks across the back of the church, sits down. I stopped myself. I said, I saw in a vision last night praying. I said, I saw you walk in. I saw you come across the back. I saw you sit down. And I saw myself ask you this question. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues? And she said, no, I'm not. I said, come up here. I lay hands on her. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like I saw. <laughs> so we had a good time. I just didn't know, I didn't know I was being tried out. <laughs> Praise God. But you know what? I stay where God said stay. I didn't push myself out. I didn't pray myself out. And I, because of it, can't tell you the, the things, the connections, the things that have happened in my ministry and life because of it and the faithfulness to that that God has wrought in our lives because we didn't pray ourselves out of a place that was difficult and we wanted to. We put our desires aside and stay with the will of God. Oh, and how the Lord is blessed and how the Lord is honored and how the Lord is promoted. And we've walked in places, or we've walked in places with the Lord and done things because we, we stayed with his plan and didn't allow our hurts and wants or desires or our own desire to be the big dog move us to a place other than what God had for us.